this is Marco Leroc. I'm your host for Inside a Great Man on Marco Leroc TV. I'm so excited for my guest today is Mr. Casanova Bro. What's up, my man? What's up? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm blessed, so I can't complain. That's good to be blessed, right? Thank you for being on the show today. And I'm really excited because uh, you're a realtor uh, for Berkshire Hathaway. And I'm not really excited because you're a realtor. I'm more excited because I have witnessed your journey uh, when you start this process to become a realtor. And from where you were, from where you are today, uh, it just amazed me. So tell me first, why did you have decided to be a realtor? Yeah, no, um, so growing up, I grew up in inner city Chicago. And so- when So you I, grew up in Chicago, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did, yep. So I, I came, thought it was Iowa first. Yeah, I came here from okay. Sioux City, Iowa. I see, okay. That's so, yep, we've been here here in Omaha for about four, going on four years, my wife, my son, and I. But originally I'm from inner city Chicago, so that's where a lot of my family still uh, live. My, my grandma and my uncle both still live back there, so we always try to get back there, and then they come here as well. But to, to answer that question, uh, when I was growing up, you know, a lot of the times they say what you see is what you'll become. So for me, I never seen home ownership. I never seen ownership or entrepreneurship of any kind. So it wasn't until I got a little bit older and, and you know, and going through college at the University of Iowa that I really thought that I wanted to do something different than the conventional path of finish off school, get this job and, and do anything and do something else with it in maybe the corporate realm. Yeah. So for me, um, I was watching a YouTube video and on there, I, I believe it's the celebrity realtor, uh, maybe Jay Morrison, I think it might be his name, but he had said something that stuck and resonated with me. And he said, he or she who owns the land makes the rules. And so for me, I was just like, wow. And, and, they, and then I was always a big believer of Forbes and things like that. And growing up, my favorite show was always VH1's The Fabulous Life Of. Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever seen that. So you dream of those fancy houses and all that stuff. Oh, right. And they have the price tag on it. And they show Richard Branson. He just bought a $7 million island. And I'm like, Virgin oh, Island, right? yeah. So I'm like, how can I do that? So when I started looking at it, I noticed that like all the billionaires, not at least all of them, but a significant portion of them had a significant portion of their wealth tied into real estate in some form, right? It could have been residential, it could have been commercial, it could have been industrial, but it was some form of real estate. So for me, I was like, wow, like that's what I would want to do. Plus at the same time, I had a, a personality that I felt could connect with a lot of people, I could educate pretty well. And so I was like, well, that's what I want to do. Well then tie it back to my upbringing, I knew nothing about real estate. So my uncle, my grandma, my mom, none of that ever owned a house that I knew, and, and so I was like, well, how am I gonna do it? Well, I figured no better way than to learn that business than to get my real estate license. And when I say that business, I really just mean more so investing. Investing in real estate, because especially um, any ethnicity, but definitely for the African Americans and the black culture, understanding the power of owning things was so big and I, I saw that early on and I was blessed enough so I was like well what better way for me to learn about investing than to get out there get my real estate license help other people buy and sell but also build relationships with philanthropists um, lenders appraisers home inspectors it, it, contractors of any sort and then I could kind of learn on the back end as I go so that was the reason why I said hey I'm gonna get this real estate license plus the thing about real estate is there's really no ceiling to your income you know you kinda it's what you put in is what you get out so I knew I had no ceiling and I've always once I I would say from an early age, I, I was always very determined. My wife says that's why my son and I, you know, we, we butt heads. That's why, that's why she married you then? <laughs> that too, that too. But that's because you were I, determined. <laughs> I, I was pretty determined and she has a story that she loves to tell all the time. Okay, she'll be watching later. She, she, she definitely will, so she'll see that. So I gotta watch what I say too, because exactly. it's the weekend, I don't want to have a couple, day, a couple long days till work starts back up, but so, that was uh, something that I was always persistent of. And I knew that in real estate, if I hustled, if I was accountable, if I educated and communicated well, that it, I could be as successful as anyone else. You know, not only in the city, but the state and also the region and country. So yeah. that's what I've set out to do. Yeah, definitely I see that you're doing great. Uh, I call you sometimes a beast. Uh, you're all over the place, you're pushing, you know, you're hustling, and then you'll be showing some results. 
you know, win some awards, you know, selling homes. You know, every time I see on Facebook, you just see this sign, sold. I was like, gee, he's crushing it. What are your strategies? What are your key? What have allowed you to accomplish those greatness in your area? Great, great, yeah. Um, so I would say number one is being present, right? Being hungry, but also being present. So for me, again, tying it back to being a self-starter, like every day when I, I get an opportunity to chase my dreams or to to lie in bed and, and sleep with them you know that's a quote that a lot of people have seen before on some fashion so when i get up every single morning i know that right now my motor runs at 120 miles an hour right and so i never want to look back at me being 35 37 40 not that those are older ages but i'm saying right now i have the opportunity to be present Right? I have the opportunity to really push myself to make sure that I gave it my all because, yes, I do have a six-year-old boy now, and he's at that stage where he's very, very intuitive, and he watches everything. Right, So every day when my son goes to school, and this is something just particularly I, I seen a couple years ago somewhere through social media, and I really adapted it, and my wife could, could tell you, but and my son could tell you as well. But every morning when he goes to school, when we get up, I tell him two things. I say, what are we going to do today? Or I ask him, what are we going to do? the day and he says two things one is be great the second is be a leader so those are things that I know that he's watching and I know that if if we're not talking about being a boss in any sense we're really talking about being a leader and if I can't show him the way if, if he sees every time dad's not hustling dad's not going out and chasing his dreams on his journey how can I tell him to do that so I think that that's been my strategy a lot of it comes from persistence um, I feel like uh, I had a conversation with another gentleman a couple weeks ago and he said something to me and uh, I'll tell you, his name is Greg Harris and and he said to me um, you know persistence respects persistence and and I was like, wow, like I've, I've said that, I've heard that, but you've never heard it in that sense, you know, and sometimes things just click. And that did click for me. And I was just like, you know what, they do. You know, we're all on some type of a journey and you respect it so much more when you've been through it and you see someone else on the upcome. That's amazing. I love it. So I understand that you're also a great networker. Yeah. You know, you like to build a relationship. Uh, what do you think are the key to have an effective, healthy relationship with others, especially professional ones? Yeah, I would say uh, adaptability. Adaptability is such a big thing. And I know in this country, uh, right now with everything we're going on, so many people struggle with adapting because they feel like they maybe can't be PC if they're trying to adapt to other people's situations, right? So I think adaptability has been something that I've always, I've been able to listen, see, you know, what are the things that you're excited about, right? Whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's uh, money, you know, and monetarily, whether it's just your family, you know, and, and I try to relate that in ways. A lot of, I guess I've been fortunate enough to be able to listen to other people's stories and relate that back to someone else, whether they're going through something of hardship or whether they're just going through something that's, um, a small bump in the road, right? To tell them, hey, I've been in a journey like you have been. I have friends that are in a journey like you have been. And that really translates into real estate because a lot of the times people just don't know down payment wise what they can qualify for for home um, maybe they had a bankruptcy things like that so if they're not educated on the ways that they can move forward past that situation they feel like there's no hope for them so gr growing up i'm sure you experienced some adversity in any shape or form so can you share with us uh, how you were able to grow to that period of adversity uh, so that way somebody's out there who's going through like a tough time, uh, how they can elevate themselves through it. Yeah, the, I think that's a great question. Um, for me, I, I'm never ashamed to say, you know, I grew up and I didn't have any resources, right? Um, and, and I always like to, to make sure that I state early on that I, was, I never had lack of love and support. I just didn't have resources. I didn't have money. My mom, the, the cliche saying of uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul. You know, that was what my mom and my grandma did, but I always had the love and they tried to give me everything that they could. Um, so I think with that, I was early on, I was able to see what it was like to really work hard, right? And, and sometimes when you're growing up in a, in, a, in a community where no one has resources around you, 
it's hard to feel like you can get out of there. So I was fortunate enough that at the time when I was finishing up middle school, my cousins had moved to Sioux City, Iowa because of what's now Tyson, but it was IBP at the time. And then Gateway was booming as well in North Sioux City, South Dakota. So um, they moved out of there after they graduated college and that. And then they call back up my mom and grandma and say, hey, you got to get Cass up out of there. Uh, this is way more suitable for a 12, 13-year-old boy. Um, so you got to get him out of there. Next thing I know, less than uh, two days later, I'm on a Greyhound going to check out Sioux City, Iowa. And then uh, less than 60 days later, I'm in a U-Haul, and, and now we're moving to Sioux City, Iowa. So huge culture shock, right? Um, but with that, I was exposed early on to people that necessarily didn't look like me, didn't have all the resources, but I was just, I, I was when I say that I'm blessed, I was just, fortunate enough to be put in situations where I could use my adaptability, I could use who I am on the inside, I could use my drive, my hunger, and, and I could try to get out there and see what's possible. Because I think that at the end of the day, you always have to, I feel like at the end of the day, you always have to get out there and try other methods that maybe didn't work for other people. Right? You can't go down the same path. If you're thinking that, oh, mom and dad went to college, they're attorneys, all that, and that's going to be my path, yes, it could if that's your drive, your determination. But we're going to have different social, um, social conflicts that come up. So I think that you have to try out your own methods. And I think I was fortunate enough to, again, have that support, have that, um, the drive. You know, and the love to always, I was never told, being honest with you early on, that there was nothing I couldn't do. Talking about community, so beside your son, what are the impact Casanova can make on other kids in underserved communities here in Omaha? Yeah, so that's another reason why I love real estate, right? Because um, re everything, in my opinion, everything starts with home ownership. Right. Everything starts with ownership in general. In ownership in general. Ownership in general. Whether you're owning a business, whether you're, whatever you're owning, if you can own in even a, your car, even your car. But it kind of leads to the second point that I was going to say. Um, a car definitely. It's a it's a vehicle to be able to get you more assets. But another thing that I was going to say is, um, if you're if you're owning things that are that appreciate. Because that's a lot of the times people do love to own. Everyone loves to own something. But you have to be exposed to the things that are appreciating asset as well as a depreciating asset. And that's where I feel like my value in real estate really comes in because people that are in lower income communities, a lot of the times those are the families that are growing, the minority families, but those aren't necessarily the families that are educated enough to under, and, and not in the sense of school sense, but educated enough to say, hey, instead of putting that money towards renting and, uh, and paying down someone else's financial freedom or you know, giving them, let's figure out a way, let's figure out a program, let's save up some of this to be able to go purchase your own home and get yours so you can start to build this foundation, this legacy for not only your kids, but your kids' kids and things like that. So that's where it's been big for me. Um, just making sure that, again, it ties back to being present, making sure that I'm out that I'm giving everything that I have to not only the community but at the same time to my family because the more I'm out there I'm building these relationships the more that hopefully my son my wife will be able to benefit from it and we can be able to create a life that we don't necessarily have to have a vacation from five to seven to ten years from now yeah. if you had to have lunch with one person right now for 10-15 minutes or half an hour who would that be wow any person any person right now yeah who you choose Jay-Z. Jay-Z, why? Uh, um, I felt like, so he just had an album that just came out called 444, and I don't know if you've heard it, but this album speaks to my soul particularly, and I've been uh, very shameless to say that. Uh, it's, it's just everything, but in there, he talks about, you know, like black excellence, you know, legacy, all the things that I've kind of alluded to in this, you know, conversation. So I think that Jay-Z, from where he's come from, with Marcy Projects, and every kid has a different story, whether yes. you're girl, boy, man, woman, wherever you are in that uh, realm of life right now for you, he came from a super struggle, right? And, uh, and now if you look at him, he did it his way, but he has a seat at any table that he wants in the country. You know, if, if, he, if he needed to get a meeting with Warren, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't take two calls for him to be able to get that. But also, again, ownership. 
you know, where we look at we we look at alcohol and things like that that he owns. We look at the the Brooklyn Nets, and then he sold off that, but he still has a piece of the uh, Barclays Center. We look at uh, ti or title the uh, record label that he has. We look at the clothing line that he started. He really. He, he studied other people. He built relationships with people like Dame Dash and big um, entrepreneur and, and moguls. And he was able to use those relationships to be able to put a lot of people on as well. Like he, I just, uh, I, it's hard for me to explain that in, in five yeah. minutes, but <laughs> that that's my guy right now. That's, that's what I would say. I would say Jay-Z for what he's been able to do, not from the uh, social aspect and things like that, but from the entrepreneurship side. He's came from nothing and really turned it into something. Then. Cool. What would be your last advice to you to my viewers? So I have a quote that I live by, and, uh, and it is, if you're in the room and you're the smartest person in that room, then you're in the wrong room. Yeah. Right? Some people have said it in a different variation of if uh, you're the smartest person in your circle, you're in the wrong, you, have, you need a new circle, whatever you want to say. But for me, I, I'm a strong believer of um, iron sharpens iron. So you have to have people that continuously uplift you, but not at the same time of, of just spiritual, because you're gonna get that. Make sure that you respect your cheerleaders that are already in your corner, whether it's your daughters, whether it's your wife, no matter who it may be, there's people already in your corner. So don't look past the trees because you're trying to see the entire forest, right? But at the same time, make sure that you have people around you that are doing well in their respective communities or industries and things like that to be able to, to always push you. Make sure that um, every day you're learning something new. And this generation, um, and I don't mean that in the sense of, of age, but it, in the time that we're in right now in life, anything that you want, you can go get that information mm. because of YouTube, because of freelancer sites. Yeah. Uh, there, anything that you want, you can go get it. That's why I say be great, be a leader, um, untap your potential. Yeah. So where can people find you or most information about you if they want to reach out to you, assess you? Yeah, so real estate's pretty transparent. So I have a website, uh, homesbycasanova.com. Okay, homesbycasanova.com. Yep. Um, also, if you look me up, I'm, I'm on all the social media sites. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Twitter, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, right. I'm on all those. So it's pretty transparent. I want to make it so people can always contact me, whether they're, of course, looking to, to sell their home or buy their home. But also, you know, if there's an opportunity for me to just educate or even just connect with them more and learn more about how I can help their business or their industry, I'd love to. Awesome. Thank you so much, Casanova. Appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate yours as well.